Hello and welcome to another video from Direct Processing Network. Today we will be learning how to add a modified inventory in your Clover station. First thing we are going to take a look at is what is called the inventory app. Once you open your Clover station you are going to go to the inventory app. Here you will have different options. You will have the items, you will have categories, you will have modifiers and labels. I'll be going over each one of them and how you can use each one of them to manage your inventory, your menu, or the services that you sell at your business. So first of all, we're going to talk about the item. So at the item level, this is where you would create just a single item that you need to add to your inventory. So for this example, I am going to use a Corona draft and in my case I want the Corona draft to have a fixed price of $5.99 here in the item option you're, you're gonna have the ability to manage different things when it comes to the price you'll be you'll see you have a drop-down menu here in the drop-down menu you have two options the most commonly used are, are fixed price if for example your Corona draft has say uh, a fixed price of $5.99 we can put it in here and that's the one I was selecting but if you have a price such as maybe you have a meat shop or maybe you have a steakhouse or maybe you have a supermarket and you need to sell things um, based on market price you will select variable and when you select variable to an item, what that's going to do is that every time you sell this item, the Clover system is going to ask you to establish the price when you sell it versus a fixed price, like what we're using in our example, would we'll always keep it at $5.99. The variable price, as with the example of a meat shop that I was giving you, if the client comes and buys, um, a stake order for $44.50 based on the weight that is something um, where you would want to program that item as a variable price item. The next thing you're gonna see is uh, some of our some of the native stock tracking capabilities that the Clover has so the first one would be the item cost so this is a great way to keep control of your overall cost um, based on the items that you purchase and sell in your business. Let's say for example this Corona costs um, $1.25 when I get it and let's say for example I have 25 in my stock. I can set all of that up already in the Clover Station so that way you know whenever I sell 24 beers the system can automatically let me know that I'm running low in my stock. If you have either a product code, which is optional, or you have an SQ, we can use the either a handheld scanner or we can use the internal scanner that the Clover Station brings, which you can access by placing the placing your cursor right here in the SQ, and then you're gonna press this button that is on the left hand side bottom corner and this is going to open the camera so that you can scan your item right here. The camera is right here so you just scan the item here and that way the system can also manage and track your item with the SQ that you establish. A couple of more things that I would like uh, to mention in this screen is that in this screen you can also select what shows in the POS and what does not. So you'll see an option on the top that says uh, show on register so the one that says show on register it, it's just like what it sounds if this was a product let's say for example this was my case of corona and I don't sell by the case so I don't want to show it on the register I wouldn't check this button but for this example I do want to sell my corona draft in the register so I'm gonna select that Another great feature that you'll have here is that 
you can man manually or automatically manage the availability of your product. So right now I have it in a manual way, but if I wanted to make it automated, what this will do is that if you set it to automatic, items will become unavailable for sale once they're out of stock. And I'll give you an example where one of our existing clients uses this. I have a client that she has a bakery in Tampa, Florida, where she only makes a certain amount of product every day. So the moment she runs out, she closes the store for the day. So this would be a, a way, and this is a way that she currently manages her inventory by setting it up to automatic. And what, we, what this would do is that whenever I get down to 25, um, I go down to 25 Corona Draft, the system automatically will not show it available for my employees to sell it anymore to customers. And this is, these are some of the different functions and options that you'll have when you're creating your item. There's a few other ones that we're going to overview right now. You'll see that there's an option that allows you to select an item color. So for example, maybe I want my draft to be gray. I can set that up in there. I can also set up categories, labels, and modifiers, but that is something we're going to overview in just a minute. So at this point, let's say I don't need to put any more information regarding, uh, regarding this item. So what I can do is press save. And now my item is saved inside the inventory. Now that we added our item, it's important to also talk about the categories. So the categories is going to be pretty much the buckets you create for all of your items to be organized within the Clover system. So pretty much anything that you do here with the categories is what you're going to see on the register app. So if you see on the register app, I have Mike's entrance, I have wine, pizza, pasta. And if I go here to the inventory, I can see the same categories right here under my inventory management app. The categories, if you wanted to create a new one, you would press the plus sign. And for example, let's say it was draft beer, I could create that category. And then my item that I created for draft Corona could be attached to this category. If you ever want to change the category where an item lives, you would come to the items, find the items, so for example, I'm gonna look for the Corona beer. If I look for the Corona draft, here it is. And now, I want to attach it to that category. So in the same item screen that we were working on earlier, you're gonna come to where it says categories. And here, you're gonna see that all of the categories available will come up. There's some occasions where you may want a product to show up twice within a category, right? So I'll give you an example of that. In this specific menu, we have a category called Fast Bar, where we put all of the most sold drinks, and then we also have one called Beers. So if I wanted these, and I have Draft Beer. So if I wanted my Corona Draft to be included in the Fast Bar, and also in the Draft Beer, I will select both, hit Apply, and now my Corona is gonna populate on both of those categories. The next thing that you're gonna see in your item is the ability to select the taxes that your item receives. Here in this example, we have it set up to the default Miami-Dade sales tax of 7%, but as you sell in different states and different cities, we can modify these as you need. Another great thing about this is that if you have items that some of them are taxable and some of them are not, we can program your menu or your inventory so that everything that is non-taxable does not receive a tax and everything that is taxable gets automatically a tax for your local city. So that's as far as the taxes. Then we still have the modifiers and the labels. Uh, 
I'm gonna click save here just to save my item. And the next thing I'm gonna go to is labels. So labels in Clover has two functions. Number one, labels can be used for um, giving the system instructions for uh, printing capabilities and also for kitchen display systems. If you're one of these restaurant owners that would like to upgrade your kitchen to the touch screens just like the big restaurant chains do, if I was to set up a kitchen display system and I want everything that is salad and food to go to that specific kitchen display system, we would create a label and that's how we give the instruction to the printer or the kitchen display system screen. The label can also be used for inventory purposes. So for example, this client that, um, this menu that we're looking at is from a real client and they sell a lot of liquor. So they wanted to classify their sales between beer sales, bottle sales, champagne sales, non-alcoholic beverages, food sales, liquor sales, and so on. So that's the other way you would use a label. You would create a label here for example, let's say draft beer sales. Let's say I wanted to track that individually. And then what I would do is that I grab that label and I will attach it to every single product that I want to be reported under this label. What these would do is create a extra section on your report that is gonna break it down between beer sales, wine sales, food sales, and so on um, with whatever you want to customize your report with. Last but not least, we have in the inventory a section that is called modifiers. So modifiers is the part of Clover where if you have the software level, because please remember Clover has different software levels, some of them give you basic inventory, some of them have advanced inventory like what we're overviewing today, and some of them bring no inventory at all, just like in the case of our free level to use Clover. If you would like to learn more about the free level to use Clover, please make sure to contact us below to the website floridapayments.com or call us or text us directly to 1-855-955-6111, which is the number you'll see below. Modifiers, it's where you'll be able to create additional options for items that you have in your inventory. A perfect example of this is my modifier called burger add-on. So this client sells burgers. So there's a few things that people request when they're ordering their burger. Some people want to add bacon. Some people want a different kind of cheese. They want American, provolone, onions, mushrooms. Whatever you need to program here, we can program it. And another great thing about this is that if the modifier is included on the price, we can price it at zero, but if it is an additional modifier, we can also put the price here so that when the client pays, they're paying their extras as well. Another great thing of the modifiers is that in certain orders and certain dishes, you're going to need to force, um, you're, you're wanting to you're going to use the feature that makes the modifier be required. And I'll give you an example, a perfect example here. So for the pasta, our client has the option to choose red sauce or white sauce. So in this modifier group, you can see that we program a minimum of one and a maximum of one. What this is gonna do is that whenever the server or the bartender is ringing up the sauce and it's ringing up that pasta, the system is not gonna allow him to place the pasta order until he chooses the sauce choice that the client wants to get. Is it red, is it white? But if they don't choose one, they won't be able to move forward. This is for anything that is mandatory. It also works with the sides. For example, in this one, this dish brings either a cup of soup or a side salad. So whenever we send instructions to the kitchen, you want to be as specific as possible. So if I was to send, for example, a fettuccine alfredo with a side salad, I want to be able to tell this to the kitchen, 
from the moment I'm placing the order, not having to run to the kitchen to give them instructions after I send the order through the POS system. And that's actually our deep dive into the Clover Inventory app. If you have any questions about this, please leave us a comment below, like this video, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.